Good morning, it's Friday morning and I'm out in my garden looking at my cauliflower and I'm gonna show you what I found. What did we find, Lydia? Little bugs and big bugs and yeah. butterflies. All right, so here's what we have. These are my cauliflower plants. And you noticed a couple days ago they didn't have all these holes in them. It, oh, there goes the ambulance, they just tooted at us. All right, so we have these leaves with a bunch of holes in them and that means more than likely cabbage worms. So we have to look all over the plants, the front, the backs. Okay, here's one right here. There's another one. Is it a little? No, it's a big one. You want to get them? I'll get some of my butterfly. Come on, you go on Lydia's butterfly. My dandelion actually. There, I'll just pull them out and drop them on you. Here you go. And my I'll put him out. Well, he likes mommy better. Okay. Oh, oh, there he goes. I'm going to have to get him, take him out in the yard. So anyways, um, what happens are these cabbage worms, here's another one right here, have mommy. to come off the plants before they destroy the plants. Well, put him outside to Yep, grow. go take him out of the garden. Um, mommy, where did, where did the herb catching butterfly thing go? I don't know. I think we sold it. No, I don't think we sold it. So pretty much you want to keep it in our butterfly catching thing. Pretty much what you have to do is you have to go over every single leaf. Here's another one right in here. And um, if you don't like squishing them like this, you can just have a bucket of soap and water that will take care of them. Um, and see this leaf, they're really aggressive on. Here's another one on it. Oh, it'll turn into a pretty oh, here's, butterfly. Here's another one on the stem there. I want to do it. Is it a little? No, here's that one. Do you want that? Hey, can you put it? Don't let them fall off. There you go. You have to pick these off or they'll destroy your plants, which is kind of... Is it little? Yeah, it's another one just like the other, just like the other side. Um, hopefully these caterpillars I'm giving Lydia won't come back into the garden. And then we go to our next plant and we do the same thing. Now, this can get a little labor intensive if you've got a big crop of cabbage or cauliflower and broccoli. Oh, now look at this. This here, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. Those are eggs, so we're just gonna actually rub them off, and get rid of them. Where's the eggs? Oh, I just squished them, honey. I want to see it. Then we move on to our next plant. No. They were back here, right there. I've been spending about 15 minutes out here just picking off these worms, and you could spray it with seven if you don't mind having the chemicals in your garden. We try to run as much of a organic garden as we possibly can, so that's why I'm hand picking these. Um, again, if you want to just dump the caterpillars into a little bucket of soap and water, that's just as effective as squishing them. It's just whatever your comfort level is. Um, what did you find over here on these plants? Oh, that's a little, little like a leaf hopper. That's all right. That's no biggie. Does he eat plants? No, they're okay. Oh, then he can go on plants. So it's definitely worth it if you take a couple days to just always keep checking for your worms. Again, that's why I've encouraged you guys, if you guys have a garden, to go out once, twice a day. Just look at your plants, get familiar with your plants, and notice when something changes. And check out that super pretty spider I found in my garden. No worries, I'm not going to squish him. I'm sure he's probably being very helpful in here. Wow, really stunningly beautiful. Ah, those white butterflies are the ones that are responsible for laying eggs on my cauliflower. Look at that, you made a tent for the girls. Years ago, when I first started gardening, I was always very squeamish about doing things like squishing worms or picking off worms. And as long as they're not like giant caterpillars, like tomato hornworms, I don't mind picking them off. Tomato hornworms are probably an exception. And if you good guys don't know what hornworms are, you can Google them. They can get to be about that long if you let them rain with no control in your garden. And those are just nasty to pick off plants. I just, <laughs> now thankfully the few times I have had tomato worms, worms in the past, we had, um, well, first of all, Art doesn't mind picking them off. But second of all, we've had a uh, parasitic wasp, the brachinoid wasp, come in and actually lay its eggs on top of the back of the caterpillar, which 
pretty much renders the caterpillar useless in the garden and it'll stop its destructive waves because the eggs that the wasp laid on top of the caterpillar will just eventually kill the caterpillar. So I haven't had to deal with that problem because as long as the brachinoid wasp is around and doing his job, <laughs> I don't have problems with tomato hornworms. Now the brachinoid wasp is very attracted to the zinnia plants and that is why for past years I have put zinnia plants on both ends of my tomato gardens because if I can attract beneficial insects to my garden and they take care of the bad insects, it's a win-win situation. Now this year I only got one zinnia plant. So I'm not sure that's going to be enough to do any good, but we'll just have to wait and see and worse comes worse. I pick them off by hand this year. Just checked the weather and they've now put us in a tornado watch until 10 o'clock tonight. And that, you know what that means, it's time to pull the canopy down, get everything secure. Hang on guys, let's do this together. We need Peter or Cherry. Well you usually have each kid grab a corner here. We're becoming pros at this. Right. Okay, Daddy squishes it. We're only in a watch right now, not a warning. I don't know, I may have misspoken about that. Which means the conditions are favorable for a tornado to happen. And you know, I realize some of you guys, this is a reality you guys deal with all the time. Um, it's not something that's all that common here. It happens occasionally. What do you think we get, our uh, one tornado warning? Two tornado warnings, two a year. And you almost never get anything out of them. They're just, or they're not warnings, they're watches. So now I have John in high alert mode, which if you watch our vlog for a long time, you know this doesn't take much to make John go in high alert mode. But we'll get everything picked up out here, tidied up, and keep an eye on the radar and the news channels. We're thinking of going to the bank the grocery store and the post office when Art gets home from work, but that's gonna be right around the time these star storms are supposed to be starting in. So I think we're gonna just go now. Grace and Mary are already sleeping, so I will just stay home with them while Art runs. I'm looking for my Hannaford flyer, Fresh Shepherd and Hannaford flyer, so I can make a list for Art. And since I can't go, he said he'll stop and grab one. I don't need much. Here's the Hannaford flyer and I think the things that I'm most interested in is the skinless chicken breast or thighs. I need to do a recipe with that. The sweet corn and then the cherries are $1.99. Just quick look to see if there's anything else but I'm guessing Art can handle those few items. I don't see anything there. Let's see. That's all pre prepared stuff. I can't believe this. Zucchini or summer squash? $1.49 a pound. I'd be rich if I could sell all the zucchini that I get in a year. Let's see. What else? No, no. Um, half and half. No. Anything over here? Do, 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 do. I don't know if any of you guys do your shopping like this. I pretty much look for the lost leaders on the front page which in this case is the chicken and the cherries and the corn. And then everything else, sometimes they're good deals, but Hannaford doesn't have like knockdown deals like Price Chopper do does. Now these might be good. Let's see, that's my seltzer water. Now Price Chopper has more loss leaders. They've got the cherries, same price as Hannaford. Their corn isn't as good of a price, but they have the Hellman's mayonnaise. It's not bad. It'd be better if you had a coupon for those. Um, look up H. Mm -hmm. Can you look up um, H for Hellman's? Let's see. I think there's a coupon. I don't know how much. Hellman off of one. So that would make it a dollar ninety nine. Oh, that's pretty good. Do I have two of those? That's two. Yeah, so anything else? All right. I'm not seeing. Now see here. Here's the Polar Seltzer here. Price shop for a dollar and the other Hannaford was 79 cents. And the last page. How much do we normally pay for that? Trace May. Um, that's not that bad. $3.99. Those are the big bottles. Yeah. And if you have the $3 off coupon, that would make it 99 there was cents. No $3. But I don't think we have a coupon yeah. for that. So we'll just hold off on that for now. Okay. This is and the back page on here is also their lost leaders. 
All right, well, I think that's it. We need to go to the bank, and also Janelle needs a few things at Price Chopper. So uh, I am going. Um, we decided to go before the storms hit. So Janelle is with the kiddos who are sleeping, and I took Charity with me, and we're going because Charity can help me figure out what we need. Um, whenever Janelle sends me to the store alone, uh, bad things always happen. Not, not that I buy too much, it's a, actually I buy too little because I can never find anything. Charity's going with me and also I have three other kids. We're headed into Hannaford. We're getting some seltzer water. The only reason we get this is it helps Janelle swallow pills, but she has a hard time doing otherwise. She, no, she actually drinks it to stay hydrated. $1.69 a pound. I guess that's a good price. Some cherries for $1.99 a pound. Corn, six for a dollar. This is our stuff from Hannaford. Now we're going to Price Chopper. All we're getting here is some mayonnaise. Um, it's on sale and we have a coupon. So it's pretty cheap. While we're here, we're going to check the markdowns. Here are the markdowns. Anything good? Oh, yeah, $1.75 for this. Daddy loves this stuff. Oh, so if you had a coupon, like, well, cereal, is that good? Well, I think it's a mark up. I think it's like $1.50 without a smash box. No, 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 it's much more. It's like $3. Oh. It's $3. What? Mm -hmm. How much is rice? Um, three forty. Is that a good price or not? I don't know. I do not know what the going price for rice is. Easter bunnies for I don't think we need Easter oh, we bunnies. We can get some of these. Oh, can quinoa. It's too Let's see, four fifty. Wow. I'm dead. Daddy, can we get something? Some matzo balls? No, ma we don't oh, need right. matzo balls. Right I now. love. Do you think we should get this? Yes. Um, yes. It's cheaper at Dollar General. How much is it at Dollar General? It's a dollar fifty for a pound box, and this is twelve ounces. No, let's get a Dollar General then. If we if we even need it, we're not getting any markdowns. A lot of these look like they're mark ups actually, but you don't have to buy them if you don't want to. And now we're going to check the meat markdowns. Is that a good price? Oh, that might be a good price. For drumsticks, but you got to remember drumsticks have lots of bones. Oh, okay. Buddy and Peter want to look at the lobsters. Yeah, that's all we got at Price Chopper. We didn't find anything else that was a good deal. Usually Price Chopper is cheaper than Hannaford, but sometimes it's not. So this time it wasn't. I'm at the library now. We're going to claim our prizes for the reading club. Jen, what do you want? They have baseball tickets. This is what I love those things, those coloring books. Yep. I'm going to put them in this. What do you want, Charity? I got the, I put it in the adult coloring books because I have all those. I think this is Peter because... Oh, demolition. That looks like a good one for Peter. So the kids have to check out the house again. Do you like the house? This begs the question, if the kids love a house this size, why do we have a house that's so huge? We're home now. It's really raining. Art was at the library it was pouring rain and then there was two big booms of lightning well it sounded close to my house and charity came home when they came back from the library and said that it was really close to the library where they were and it scared mary and she was crying and crying and crying but we only had a couple and it scared me yeah it it was really really close we only had two or three really good booms and that was the extent of it we had a cell that went just east of us and that hit clifton park pretty hard but right now we're just getting primarily rain and there you can see it's, it's not raining too hard it was raining a lot harder a little while ago we're still in the tornado watch until midnight they've extended it to midnight now and that's fine you know we weren't planning on doing anything we actually had a picnic originally scheduled for today but the family canceled it. It's a really large picnic. There's about 100, 100 plus people that go to it. 
and that got canceled today because the weather forecast was supposed to be pretty severe and we're going to be doing that tomorrow instead.